pediatrician, Ros Jones, and senior consultant in communicable disease control, Dr. Bharat Pankania. Uh, Dr. Pankania, welcome back to the show. Lovely to see you again. Do you think five-year-olds need the jab? Well, primary prevention works and primary prevention saves lives and it has been effective. And what we need to bear in mind is if we are not only dealing with a infection, we're dealing with a um, prolonged signs and symptoms of a infection that has come and gone, the long COVID syndrome as people refer to it as. So we know that uh, we can prevent infections and we can attenuate or even not create a long COVID situation by primary immunization. And then one more thing, which is also very important to bear in mind, and a few minutes ago you were discussing it, and this is the question of variants. At this point in time, we do not have uh, variants that cause severe disease in children, but that can change suddenly. Uh, we just don't know. On the other hand, we have the vaccines that could prevent uh, such a thing from happening. And one more thing, this isn't new. We do this all the time. So for example, we have a seasonal influenza program, which does precisely what the uh, COVID vaccination program will also do. But Dr. Pankania, COVID-19, dreadful virus though it can be, it just doesn't thre threaten children, does it? I mean, I, I don't know how many children in the UK that didn't have serious medical conditions that, that died from COVID. So why jab them? Well, well, if you look at the data even today from uh, the Office for National Statistics, a respected source, a respected place sure. in the United Kingdom, then hospital admissions for the younger age group have gone up. Furthermore, um, as I said to you, it is a primary prevention. In other words, it is an intervention that prevents an illness and in some people prevents the progression to what we refer to as long COVID. And we do precisely this with seasonal influenza. We immunize and we keep the case numbers down. We keep them, the little children, from bringing their infections to their older parents, the grandparents, and spreading infection in the community. So there is a double, double pronged approach here, triple pronged. One, you protect them from the infection. Two, you pr 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 protect them from the consequences of potential long COVID. And three, you have community suppression of infection from them, causing infections in other people who may be much more vulnerable than themselves. Basic public health measures. Ros Jones, do five-year-olds need the vaccine? Well, no, I would fundamentally disagree with what most, uh, most of what has been said. I think the vaccines have shown that they can prevent serious illness and death in people who are vulnerable, but they have not shown they can prevent infection. It's very clear now that you are more likely to get infected if you are triple vaccinated currently, the rate is higher than if you're unvaccinated. The Americans who've been rolling out for five to 11s for a while now, that, don't shake your head, that is UK NHS the vaccine, national vaccine surveillance data, it's not mine. The UK from the US, the five to 11 year olds, the latest study for them shows that by six weeks, the vaccine efficacy against Omicron has gone. JCVI themselves said that this would not be useful against Omicron. They're wanting to do this for some potential more serious wave. But by the time this like potential what? serious wave comes, this vaccine like effectively will have worn out, which is why adults are being offered third doses. Vulnerable adults are now being offered fourth doses. The other thing that we haven't raised is that 85% or more of this age group have had it. And the vaccine um, immunity is not as effective as natural immunity. The natural immunity will last really well. And we have... As all very well to say this is like the flu. This is an mRNA vaccine which is still in the trial phase. We do not know about long-term data. The JCVI themselves wanted to wait six months to follow up the children in the States who'd had myocarditis, for example, but that was overruled. We are giving second doses to teenagers despite knowing that this is the age group that has by far the highest rate of myocarditis from not, you know, five to 100. Um, and yet there's a group, the, these five to 11 year olds, for example, have the lowest death rate of any group. And you mentioned long COVID, but most of the studies have been in adolescence. And a lot of the studies that have included 
negative controls have found lots of children have similar symptoms, fatigue, headache, um, you know, depression, anxiety, lethargy. These are all symptoms of long pandemic, being constantly afraid, being out of school, being on your computer far too much. And if you look at the five to 11s, the instance of long COVID is very, very low. And also most of these data came from periods with Delta. And Omicron is probably about a third as virulent as Delta. But